The Gopher Coaches Show is presented by Window Concepts and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Mariucci Arena. That's where we're coming to you this week for the Gopher Coaches Show because hockey is heating up. We are proud to be joined by both head coaches, Brad Frost, of course, runs a very successful women's program, and Bob Motzko in charge of the men's program. And uh, this is the time of year where both of your squads seem to come to life. Right, Bob? Yeah, this is a fun time of year. I mean, just think, too, section plays going on in the state. The Wild are back in it. You know, <laughs> we're having a good second half. Our women are having a good second half, and we're heading to the playoffs. So this is the fun time for college sports and college hockey especially. And, and Brad, your team is ready for the opening round of the playoffs this weekend. Up in Duluth last week, or hosting Duluth, rather, you ended up with a shootout win and another win. What did you take out of that Bulldog series that you can use for your team to get ready for the postseason? Well, I, you know, Duluth is number eight in the country. They're, they're a really strong team. They were kind of playing for their uh, national tournament uh, lives here to, to get in, um, and they still have a little bit of time here to, to make a move. But, um, you know, one of the things that we've been doing really well here lately is defending. And uh, this time of year in the playoffs, there's not going to be a lot of 5-4, 6-5 games. <laughs> right. Right? It, it's a lot of 2-1. Uh, one nothing games and and so it's maybe a little different style than our team has had to play but I think it's going to help us in the playoffs as we go and Bob you have one more regular season series to go but it's a big one against Michigan yeah. because it determines who finishes third in the Big Ten how important is third place in the Big Ten in your mind well the most important thing is is, is to continue to play how we've been playing and, and take care of business and 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 that's what we have to put the emphasis on, that we, we finish our regular season strong. We're back at home. You know, we just had six out of eight on the road. Uh, and it just lines up where the two of us are battling against each other. And then you got Wisconsin and Michigan State playing each other for the, for the uh, league championship. So it's just one of those years where the last weekend all the stars have lined up where it's really important hockey games, but especially for NCAA play. Now, your teams a year ago, both of you had absolutely killer squads. Both teams were loaded with talent. This year, it's a different approach as you were in the Frozen Four a year ago. And with all that talent, this team, you kind of had to change things. Did you change how you coached this team, Brad? A little bit. We, we focus a lot more uh, uh, just on our, our leadership with our team. Um, so from an off-ice perspective, uh, continuing to build those relationships and connection. Uh, we've been having leadership meetings every Thursday, and, and that's really brought our group together. Um, but after graduating 11 players, <laughs> right. many of which were elite, elite players, yes. Taylor Heisey, Grace Zumwinkle, Abby Boreen, a lot that are playing professionally right now, we had to change our style of play a little bit. And there were a lot of players that uh, have been put in positions that they haven't been in uh, in the past, whether it's on the PK or top six minutes or power play. And, and so it's been a, a process for us, but really happy with how our team is has really grown throughout the year and where we are right now. And Bob, you had the same thing. I mean, you had guys that stepped right into the National Hockey League right off your TV. You had Brock Faber go from the National Championship game to a, a wild game in less than 48 hours. So how did you approach this season with these guys? Because you know where the expectations are for you every year, but you had to take a different route, I'm assuming, to get yourself back to the top. Yeah, I mean, Five guys went to the National Hockey League off last year's team. But the good news, we had the replacements. Uh, I don't think we're a whole lot different than a year ago. What happened to us early was the injuries. Like the first half of the year, we were banged up, and, and that happens on sports teams all over. But we, the great story for us is we didn't let the season get away from us early. The, our leadership stayed strong, and then we had young guys develop into key roles because those minutes that Faber, Johnson, Lacombe were taking, Cooley and Nyes had to be replaced second half of the year we've got guys replacing those and um we got to build on our experience that we had from the first half what we what we've had you know the last two years the first half these young guys and we're healthy again and i i think we're in a pretty good spot yeah no doubt about it sitting right where you are at this point looked like a lock for the ncaa tournament in a couple of weeks and brad your team it's very interesting how this has come together because your power play unit has got to be the envy of every coach in college hockey because you connected 38% with the 
extra player. How has that been achieved this year, and how amazed are you that they have been that good at clicking? Well, it's been one of the reasons that our team has been successful. We're not scoring four goals a game, four and a half like we did last year, um, but our power play is clicking, and in large part uh, because of our associate head coach, Boom May, who, who runs our power play. Both units, our threats, are uh, our quote-unquote second unit, scored two power play goals on uh, just on Saturday against Duluth. And so when you have players that uh, can put the puck in the net on, on both uh, power play units, uh, that's obviously a huge advantage. And then, yeah, the fact that Abby Murphy is, is on one of our units, I think she has 11 or 12 power play goals. Um, she shoots off the pass as well as anybody I've ever seen, and, and she's incredibly accurate. So she's a threat there as well. Is it sustainable going into the playoffs? And that could be your real key because it seems like a power play goal at a critical time can change a playoff game. Well, I hope it's sustainable, but you know, history would say that it becomes even harder to score on the power play uh, when playoffs uh, come about. Uh, same thing with you know, special teams are going to be incredibly uh, important, just like they always are. But once you get to the postseason, as you mentioned, those things can make a difference. Bob, your team has been a learning curve. You've said that. You've had so many people that had to step into new roles to take the players of those guys, take the places of the guys that went to the National Hockey League. Of the 19 games you've won this year, I think you've had nine different guys score game-winning goals. How important is that to have that success kind of sprinkled about the well, lineup? It's, it's very important for us because we, we've got the talent spread around our lineup to do it. And they have to to do it to get the confidence and I think that's what's really built the second half is is, is we have a lot of guys with enormous amount of confidence that they can change a game um, and we got to do it whether it's by playing good defense good special teams uh, and, and maybe not quite as offensive explosive as a year ago but we're not far off of it so depth has been the key for us and it has to continue to be you look at where you were a year ago you were in an eyelash of winning it all how has that been addressed with the team this time around? Did you talk about it in the first meeting and then that was it? Yeah. Or is it kind of a, a fuel that's kind of in the tank for the guys that were there and experienced it? I, I think the biggest thing, you know, two, we made the Frozen Four two years in a row, and we know what it takes to get there. Let's get back in that thing. And, you know, we sure love to go back and redo the last four minutes, you know, of a year ago, but you can't. You have to build on the experience, and let's get back in that thing. And I think that's what we've got is a, a, there's a fire burning to get us back in that thing. And, and we're, we're not a lock yet for the NCAA tournament. We're, we're good. we got work to do to lock ourselves, and then we, we know what to do when we get in there and be playing our best hockey at the end of the year. And being in St. Paul, is that a blessing, or is that something that actually uh, kind of adds more weight to your players? We can't really – talk about whether where it's at this year we want to be in it and it'll be a bonus if we can get back to it here in St. Paul uh, uh, and I'll be pressure I know from you all for that to happen <laughs> but uh, our guys know it's at stake we just want to get in that turn be playing our best hockey and and give ourselves the best chance to get there and Brad for your team it's the same kind of pressure I mean you guys can talk to each other about <laughs> what it takes to get there and because one you both have had success at that level and know what it's like to be expected to be there every year. Uh, the expectations are what the expectations are. And uh, if you're a coach of the, the men's program or the women's program here and, and it comes to hockey, the expectations are that you do everything you can to get there. And like Bob said, that's our goal. Let's get to the, let's get to the frozen four. Let's see what we can do once we get there. Um, you need breaks. You need bounces. You need referee calls. You need big saves. There's so much luck that goes into, uh, uh, into winning it all. Uh, and things have to go right, and, uh, but you can't win it if you, if you don't get there, and so that's the ultimate goal. Well, it goes a lot. I know either of you guys will not say this, but it says a lot about what you two have brought to the table because there is no programs at this university that continues to have the success year after year that you do, and we all come with expectations because of what you've delivered. So congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. All right, we're going to take a break here on the Gopher Coaches Show. When we come back, we'll start meeting the co-captains of these programs, get their thoughts on the championship runs that lie ahead. You're watching the Gopher Coaches Show from Mariucci Arena.
back with more after this. You're watching the Gopher Coaches Show. Welcome back to Mariucci Arena, the Gopher Coaches Show on location. And rejoining us now is the head coach of the women's program, Brad Frost, and one of his alternate captains, Madeline Weathington, joins us now. And thanks so much for joining us. And this has got to be an exciting time of year with playoffs right here. Yeah, playoffs start this week. It's a new season, as they say, with playoffs when they come around. So I'm excited to get after it. Uh, we can only have up to a month left of the season. So really embracing each and every day a new opportunity to get better. All right. You've been a winner all the way up since your time in high school where you got what three state championships. You won with USA Hockey. You've won regular season titles here, playoff championships. But there's one thing out there that you have not gotten your hands on. How driven are you this final crack at it? Yeah, like you said, it's my final opportunity, so I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to enjoy each and every uh, time I get on the ice and hopefully make a difference for my team. But I'm just focused on the day-to-day. -day. Uh, if you look, it's we talk about it's a process and it's a journey. So if we're focused on the outcome, we're not going to enjoy that journey. So I'm trying to enjoy each and every day. But, Brad, that makes a lot of sense, though, that you have someone that's a winner. And I'm sure when you were recruiting her, you saw that winning pedigree where she came up big in big games. And I'm assuming that's something you're going to lean on down the stretch. Oh, absolutely. You know, Madeline's our, our one fifth-year uh, senior that has been in our program now for, for five years and a uh, tremendous amount of experience. Um, she's a great student. She, you know, she's definitely a student athlete. Uh, going to be going uh, to medical school here soon. And, and so when you have players like that, you absolutely want to rely on them. She logs over 25 minutes a game for us uh, on the blue line. And, and so she's a special player, special person, but we need players like that that are winners uh, to help us continue to move forward. And, and Madeline, you look at this year's team. Last year's team was a who's who of, of <laughs> women's hockey. This one, obviously very talented as well. But it's a different kind of feel, I'm assuming, this time around. But you still have players like Abby Murphy who can <laughs> step up. And she's a unique player because not only does she lead the country in goals, she also leads the goal country in penalties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's a one-of-a-kind player. She's a very talented, world-class talent for us. I mean, she wows me every time she's on the ice she's always coming up with some type of move some type of shot that <laughs> most players can't put off and um she's not afraid to get in the scrums and get after it either and it ra it rattles a lot of the opponents too so she can bring a lot of momentum for our group and brad i'm assuming you like that edge that she brings because i'm assuming that rubs off on a lot of her teammates for sure i mean nobody wants to win more than more than Murph. She's ex extremely competitive, and that's what drives her. Um, she has that chip on her shoulder. She's a Southside Chicago kid, two older brothers, and <laughs> one's a wrestler up at St. Cloud. And, uh, uh, you know, so they've, growing up, you handled things a little differently uh, there <laughs> than maybe you did in Edina uh, or Minnetonka or Plymouth or wherever. And so, uh, you know, obviously we want her to continue to stay focused and, and on what's important. And this past weekend, she had a couple big goals and, and no penalties. And now that we're getting into playoffs here, I know that's her desire too, to stay out of the box, but still give our, our team some momentum. And, and Madeline, you have seven seniors walking through. Like you said, you've already done senior day. So you know that that end is coming. Do you feel different playing these final games and heading into the playoffs this weekend? Yeah, uh, it's we had such a fantastic senior day. They did such a phenomenal job uh, representing um, Gopher hockey and uh, having the opportunity to enjoy it with my family and my friends was really great. And I just think now we got to turn the page and focus on what's ahead. And I'm just so excited to see what this group brings. And we have a lot, not only do we have a lot of seniors, but we also have a lot of players that have never been in this position before so I'm excited to see them have this experience and they play huge roles on our team too so they're gonna have to step it up and I'm excited to see that. And coach you open up against uh, Minnesota State a team that you've beaten 
four times, but every game has been tight, including one I think went to overtime. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you expect from the Mavericks, knowing that if they don't win here, it's probably the season's over for them? Yeah, I think one of the hardest things to do is to eliminate a, a team from their, their season, right? We know that uh, hopefully we're going to continue to play on here uh, if, we, if we do what we're supposed to do, but they're going to be a really desperate group. As you mentioned, we played them four very, very close games, one goal games. I think one of them was maybe a two goal game with an empty netter, but um, it's a good matchup for them. It's a good matchup for us. And, and now that we're into that second season, as Madeline said, it's, you know, all bets are off. You, you've got to show up and you've got to compete. All right. Madeline, thank you very much for joining it. We appreciate it. Brad, as well. Good luck this weekend. And thank when you. we return here at Mariucci Arena, Bob Motzko returns with one of his co-captains. We'll talk about their final regular season series against Michigan when we continue here on the Gopher Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Gopher Coaches Show. All right, we are here at Mariucci Arena, the Gopher Coaches Show on location. And rejoining us now is the head coach of the men's team, Bob Motzko, and his co-captain, Mike Kester, join us. Gentlemen, thanks for coming. Mike, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right, you've been through a lot. Because you're co-captain, you've been through the highs and lows with this team. Mostly it's been highs. What's this team been like for you being your last kick at the can? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously having a young team, I think early on we kind of faced some adversity, and I think we've kind of used that for the second half to kind of shape us into the team that we are, and I think just getting back to playing the right way, the little details that we've kind of honed in on our game. So, and, uh, yeah, we like, you know, we got such great depth and, you know, we're ready for playoff time. This time of year, it's all about practice and getting yourself ready for those big game situations. How does practice change at this time of year for you? I know we'll get Bob's input on it, but what do you try to take out of these sessions? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just habits, just sticking with our habits. And, you know, obviously I've been practicing a long time the whole year, and I think kind of just, you know, the, however long we're going that day, I think just dialing in, being mentally and physically ready to go, and just, again, hammering down our habits so come Friday and Saturday we're ready to go. Is that the answer you want to hear, Bob? Yep. Good captain. <laughs> He's right on top of it. There's no question. And practice gets old for us uh, in a long season. We're, we're coming off a bye. We, we don't go long. We've got to have our guys really dialed in, you know, 50 minutes, one hour, get our work done, uh, be efficient, and it's about habits and doing the right things at the right time, which this group has been doing. Well, Mike, this team has been built differently this year. You don't have the high-flying power you had a year ago, but defensively this team is probably better, I'll say that, than a year ago just because of how you guys have stepped up in front of Justin Close. But down the stretch, Justin has been lights out. 5-1-1, one, and one, his goals against 1.3-something, saves percentage north of 950. What have you seen in him down the stretch? Yeah, I think it's the same thing that you see every single weekend. He's just steady back there. Um, you know, he communicates with us a lot, which I think is super important. And, you know, we have so much confidence in him that allows us to play aggressive and, you know, knowing he's got our, us, he has our back back there. Coach, you see him in so many critical situations. He was great for you a year ago. It looks like he's right on that same horse again. He's on the same horse. And the big thing, too, with our team, uh, our depth this year, like, like throughout, you know, all four lines and, and, and our defense uh, is, is really dialed in right now. And, and the whole second half, one, we were, you know, well documented. We were, had a lot of injuries. Mike had a monster injury early in the year. But as we got healthy and our young guys got more experience in critical situations, our teams really responded to that. And then Justin's there when we need him. And, and this has really been a team thing. We've got great leadership. I can't stress that enough. Uh, the heart of our team is in our captains and our leaders and what they do. And, and it's put us in a great spot. But, but now we've got to crank it up. Now it's the end of the season, and, and we've got to answer the, the call even at a higher level. Mike, does it change for you knowing that this is the last run here and that you know, things are ramping up down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, obviously we've, we've lived this journey before, just getting – getting ready and everything just gets more intense. The pace picks up in playoffs. So I think the guys that have come before us have kind of paved the pathway for us. So 
I think the biggest thing is just dialing in the details and kind of just believing in one another as we, you know, we go into battle. And then obviously this team, it's been more balanced scoring, but still you have a guy like Jimmy Snuggerud who's been pretty amazing, leads you guys in goals, game winners with five. What do you see out of him when you're on the ice with Jimmy? He's always ready to shoot. <laughs> you see it in practice too. So he just, he's working on it every day. So I think he's a, he's a great communicator too with, you know, with Morsey on that line and Rhett too. So he just smart. He finds the areas and those two are, I mean, those two are unbelievable playmakers. So. And Bob, his role has changed. I mean, last year it was all offense. This year he has to be a more balanced player. And he is. And, and he's a sophomore. He's learning. He's still a young player. But uh, much more rounded, greater detail in his game at 200 feet. Uh, and when he, he is going to shoot, though, every chance he gets, and it's a dead, it, it, he shoots the puck as hard as any player that I've coached before. Uh, and we've got to continue to find ways to get it on a stick because good things are going to happen. Last regular season series this weekend against Michigan, third place on the line. What do you expect? Yeah, I mean, they're a really good team. I mean, obviously, super. You know, highly skilled, great offensive team. So, I mean, obviously the building's going to be rocking, and, you know, we're excited for it. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, Coach, thank you for the time. Mike, we appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully we can have you guys back on when uh, there's some hardware sitting on this table. You got it. And uh, we could do a big show, maybe from the X or something like that, but we won't go down that road quite yet. All right, that'll do it for the Coach's Show. Thanks to Brad Frost. Thanks to Bob Motzko. We will see you next week.